there's steak, and then there's steak, and then there's the king of steaks. That's the porterhouse. Now, this costs a little bit, and it can be tricky to cook, but Christy is going to show us how to get it right on the first try. <laughs> we are going to make great steaks today, but you have to keep in mind that these are expensive steaks. Heck yeah. Each one of these is going to run you about $50. So I want to make sure they're done right. There you go. What we have here are actually two steaks on one bone. We've got the nice lean tenderloin on the one side and the more marbled strip steak on the other side. And these two steaks don't cook the same way. No, they don't. So that was our challenge, was to find a way to make them cook perfectly with a rosy interior and a crusty exterior on the grill in the same amount of time. Well, we're starting with two, two and a half to three pound porterhouse steaks. And you'll notice they're about two inches thick. And yes. that thickness is really important to making sure that they cook evenly. Okay. Now, we always talk about how fat equals flavor. Mm -hmm. But too much fat can cause flame ups on the grill. These look great. You only want to have about a quarter inch of fat along the outside. Okay. So I'm going to start out by just patting these dry. Now we're gonna season these, and I'm using kosher salt. It's easier to see and distribute evenly. A teaspoon of salt on each side of each steak. So these look good. I'm yes, gonna... they do. <laughs> I'm gonna transfer these to a pretty large plate, and we'll let these chill in the fridge anywhere from an hour to 24 hours. Bridget, I got the grill heated up while we were waiting. Okay. I started by opening the vents all the way on the bottom, and then I lit a full chimney of charcoal briquettes. That's six quarts. Okay. I knew that the briquettes were hot enough when they were partially covered with ash okay. on the top. And then I poured them into an even layer on half of the grill. Then I put my grate on, covered it, opened the vents, and now I just let it heat for about five minutes. Okay. Now I wanna get the grill oiled, so dip some paper towels in a little oil. So before we put them on the grill, I'm going to pat them dry because they won't start to brown until they're dry. And so. where we salted them inside and let them sit with the salt on them, that salt pulls up a little bit of that moisture to the surface. So you're just really getting rid of that. Right. So I'm going to add about a half teaspoon of pepper to both sides of each steak. Okay. In order to get the, the really great sear, we needed to use really intense heat. The problem is we have two very different steaks connected by the same bone. Mm -hmm. Place them directly over the heat. So they are over those coals. They're directly over the coals, but this is the tenderloin, mm -hmm. and this is facing the cool side. The strip steak could handle the heat, mm -hmm. but the tenderloin is so lean. You've got the strip steaks facing the hotter side of the grill, but that leaner filet, it's facing the cooler side. And what are we going to be facing? How long are we waiting here? <laughs> Six to eight minutes. With the lid off, we're just going to look for a really nice brown sear on the bottom. Oh, I'm going to be looking. <laughs> Smells amazing it out does. here. And I took a little peek. Okay. And I think we're ready to flip. All right. We need to flip these so that the tenderloin is still oriented the same way. So I'm kind of going to go tip to tail rather than side to side. All right. If you oh. get any flare ups, you can just move your steak over to the other side of the grill for a minute or so until it subsides. Don't mm. spray water on it. Look at that crust. Those are things of beauty. So how long are we going to have to wait on the second side? Just another six to eight minutes. All right. I can do that. You can. Are they done yet? Are we there yet? Are they done yet? <laughs> <laughs> if I have to come over there. <laughs> so I'm just going to flip these because you can see that we've got a really nice crust on both sides. Beautiful. So now I'm going to move them over to the cool side because we want to cook them the rest of the way over indirect heat. All right. And yes. I like the way that you face the bone towards the hotter side. Yes, it's acting like a heat shield, kind of. And that's just going to help deflect a little bit of the heat so that the steaks can cook gently over on this side. So now I'm going to leave the lid on for this last phase. We're going to let this go four to six minutes, flip the steaks, and then another four to six minutes. Gives me plenty of time to go sharpen those steak knives. <laughs> You've been so patient, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's time to check. They look great. <laughs> yes, they look I great. Do. And we can't just tempt them anywhere. We found the best, most reliable place to check it was about three inches from the tip of the strip steak. Now I'm looking for a temp between 115 and 120. 117? 117. 117. Now that temperature might seem a little low, but the thing is that these are big steaks and they're going to continue to cook once we take them off the heat. After about 10 minutes of resting, they're gonna hit 125, perfect medium rare. And we're gonna be feasting here in how many minutes? 10 minutes. All right, 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna cover them, tent them lightly with foil, keep them warm in that time.
<laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Longest 10 minutes of my life, I have to say. Well, you're about to be rewarded. <laughs> These look so good. I mean, come on. Look, look at this. Before she talks in there, that is an insanely gorgeous steak. And we're going to serve it so that it looks kind of like this. OK. But first, we have to take the meat off the bone. Yes, we do. So I'm just using a bony knife here so I can carve right near the bone. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to kind of wiggle around to find the shape of it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's the same color from the center to the exterior. That was the strip. So now I'll just carve the tenderloin off the other side. So I'm going to leave my bone, Okay. keep that, and we'll go about slicing the beef. I just want to cut this pretty thin. Oh my goodness. Like butter. It's slicing like butter. I know. I'm just going to kind of tuck the meat back in along the bone. That's well, stunning. And now we'll carve the tenderloin. Cannot forget that guy. <laughs> but look at the color of the tenderloin as well. They're both hit medium rare. They both look like butter. <laughs> now, we could eat this right now. Oh, yes, we could. I mean, we are going to eat it right now, but a little melted butter. So I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt to the butter. Heck We're just yeah. going to drizzle this all over. And now we just want to season it a little bit. All right. There's a lot of meat here. Kosher salt, a little pepper. OK. Can you hand me a plate? Oh, yes. I will gladly work that way. <laughs> so here is the strip. And, and there is your very, very tender tenderloin. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. There's the same color. Same color from edge to edge. Beautiful. <laughs> Juicy is not even close to what the slices of steak are. I mean, mm -hmm. and it tastes super beefy with that salting method that you used. Really enhanced the flavor. Right. You know, I love that method of keeping the tenderloin away from the fire, kind of shielding it mm -hmm. a little bit. It's not overcooked at all. <laughs> Christy? A steak is medium rare, but well done to you. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> well, you dropped some serious coin on these steaks, the good old porterhouse, so it pays to know how to grill them the right way. Season two inch thick steaks with kosher salt and refrigerate. Grill the steaks directly over the fire with the tenderloin facing the cooler side of the grill until charred on both sides. Finish the steaks over the cooler side, keeping the bone facing the hotter side and let it rest. Then carve, slice, and rearrange the meat around the center bone. Finally, drizzle with seasoned melted butter. These are worth every penny. So from Cook's Country and the Meat Eaters Club, the best thick cut quarter house steaks that you can ever make. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>